Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to drive down to the Hurricane Creek Trail in North Carolina. And of course, it's rainy. We're going to meet up with some people that have some cool old vintage rigs. We got uh, Tony that has a Bronco that's going to go with us if he can get off work. Walt is going to meet us there in his Scout Traveler. Uh, Jacob from Seven Bar Salvage, if you've not seen his YouTube channel, check it out. He's going to meet us there in his CJ5. And uh, Mike, Mike in his Jeep Mutt, which is an independent suspension military Jeep, which is pretty cool. Um, we're going to go down. We're going to take the trail. The trail, you know, online looks to be about a four. So we should be able to give you some chill ride, a little bit of adventure, hopefully not too much adventure. <laughs> Um, and then we'll get to, we'll introduce you to their rigs and we'll see how Nugget fares against them with the old 68 International Scout. So thank you guys for watching and let's, uh, let's get on the road before I drown. All right, folks, well, we have got the scout packed and loaded. We've got April and Mark, who I've known since, what, seventh grade? So uh, we're gonna go down and we're gonna play in the mud. And it quit raining for a little bit, so that's great. April making us some lunch. Ooh, what you got there, April? Turkey and cheese. So far, the rain has mostly held off for us. Not too bad. Mark chilled, enjoying the warmth of the <laughs> Hey, chilly? A little bit. It's a little brisk. There we go, there's some sunshine. Nice. Nothing to keep. channel was called Vintage Overlanding Alaska, but we don't live in Alaska now, so now it's just Vintage Overlanding. There is nothing about a North Carolina back road that is straight. Holy cow. Makes a man long for power steering. All right, Tony, tell me about your Bronco. That's a 73 Bronco, which I bought from my son. My son had a brain tumor, 
and we thought we were going to lose him. He was 12 years old, and we had always dreamt about building a Mustang. And he survived the surgery, and when he woke up, he said to me, I don't want a Mustang, I want a Bronco. There you go. So I went out and found it out of, uh, out of uh, the, uh, where was it? Somewhere in North Carolina on the, on the East Coast. And uh, it did not look like this. It was not drivable. <laughs> um, it was hazardous at anything over 30 miles an hour. And, uh, but the one thing that was sound on it was the body. And everything else, drivetrain, uh, all the suspension. All the suspension is custom, James Duff. Um, a lot of it was prototype James Duff stuff that now is in production. Um, and uh, it's been a labor of love. And I've had people offer me three times what it's worth. I wouldn't sell it to... <laughs> I, I wish you could go with us tomorrow. I wouldn't man. let it go for anything. Um, not for anything. And it's, it really I'd, belongs to my son. It doesn't belong to me. I'd hate to see you put a scratch on it, but still. Burn. I don't mind putting a scratch on it. <laughs> uh, I built it to drive it. You know, yeah. and uh, I think uh, since I got it looking like it is now, that was five years ago. I've had it almost 10. Five years ago, I did a complete restoration, frame off restoration, every nut and bolt, and uh, worked with a buddy of mine out of Lick Creek Restorations and James Duff. And uh, I probably put. 40,000 miles on it since then. I, I drive sharp. it. So let me ask you, from a scout guy, do you yes. ever get, hey, nice scout? No, I get nice Jeep. <laughs> okay. I, I never get nice scout. <laughs> I get. No, I don't think people know what a scout is. Yeah, I know. You, you know. you know, in the scout community, there's always bumper stickers that says it's not a scout or it's not a bronco. Uh huh. Or <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because that's all we ever get. Nice bronco. No, I get. I get nice Jeep. Um. The funny thing, you'll get a kick out of this. I've got a 73 Triumph TR6 at home. And I like my old car. And yeah. I have no we, we, we have a Volkswagen thing. Okay. <laughs> and when I drive this anywhere, I'm always surrounded by grown men. You all have grown men. Well, we made it through the night. Jacob showed up in his Jeep. Walter showed up in his Traveler. The Scout. The other Jeep down there. Tony had to go. He can't work. He had to work today, so he can't go with us. But uh, he's going to come back around in his Bronco. Um, it was cold. It wasn't terrible. It was cold. It'll be colder tonight. They were a little chilly in the tent. This is my 1971 M151A2. Oh, a lot of people call it the mutt and stuff. And it's a little four cylinder Jeep that replaced the ones you used to see bouncing around in World War II and stuff like that. They made them all through Vietnam, through the 60s and all the way up until the late 70s. And then after that, they got replaced by the Humvee in the, in the early 90s, I guess. And uh, this, I've had this thing for ever in a day i think almost 14 years now wow and uh i restored it when i first got it it did not look like this <laughs> like most old vehicles it did not look like this there was a, literally a tree growing out of the middle of it <laughs> <laughs> well so you, it's I, come a long way it did come a long way that was a lot of welding and a lot of repairs independent suspension in the independent That's suspension just crazy. all the way around it's a unibody so there's no frame so, and the differentials are bolted literally to the bottom of the body. So, huh. you get a lot of noise. <laughs> a lot of gear noise. Well, not really a traveling kind of no, setup. The, the Army didn't care. 50 miles per hour is, is about it. Any more than that, you feel like you're launching in the orbit. But, yeah, it's coil springs all the way around. Kind of, They're great little vehicles off-road. Great, like, departure angle. and. Oh, yeah, it's, it's right there. Yeah, it's right there on it, man. And check out that distributor. 
<laughs> that's all waterproof. Ain't that, it? That's one hundred percent waterproof and uh, electromagnetic pulse EMP proof. Really? Yeah. That's why they're copper wire, copper shielded like that. <laughs> that's that a, so cool. A nuclear blast won't destroy the ignition. The coil is actually mounted inside the distributor. Huh. That's why you don't even see a coil mounted. It's inside, encased in all metal. And then the spark plugs are aircraft spark plugs, air, basically aircraft wires. So it's all contained. That's ah, sweet rig. With a fording kit, I've seen them drive around with the water up over the driver. Everybody's getting their vehicles warmed up. Got Nugget blowing, blowing smoke. Walt's got his. Warming up over there too. Walt's struggling keeping his running because, well, he doesn't have a choke cable. Cause he's from Florida. <laughs> You've got it going. Finally idling up nice. We're waiting for this um, rain, snow mix to pass and then we will take off and head to the trail. Here's everybody, we're waiting to leave. <laughs> they said it wasn't supposed to start snowing until after two today. Uh, if it keeps snowing until after two, then it'll be Yeah, after. Yeah, hopefully yeah. this will yeah. just stop soon. <laughs> um, oh boy. Looks like it's sitting for At least bit. the trail will be really dry. <laughs> so there's a gas station not too far before the trailhead. And then a little further down, there's a rest area. So we topped off tanks here. And then when we got to the rest area, we aired down for the trail. The trail itself starts right at the end of the guardrail off of the interstate so you have to get prepared in advance and if you miss the end of the guardrail miss the beginning of the trail it's like a 16 mile round trip to get a second chance so you got to really pay attention here and then get out of the way so all the people behind you with drum brakes don't drive into the back of your scout there's a big old pothole when you turn off
In the first quarter mile of the trail, there are a few vacation homes. I'm guessing people drive in this way and then drive back out the wrong way on the trail. It's listed on most of the websites as a one-way trail. So if you ever try this, make sure you come in this way. I've seen a couple of videos where people meet large groups coming the wrong way and there is just nowhere to pass. So, but after you get a little further past this, the, the little vacation cottages disappear and it is all pristine forest. How you doing, Mark? <laughs> Should wore a helmet. Your head wouldn't hit the window so much. It was at this point that we 
met our first major obstacle. Nothing too bad. Air down tires are an amazing thing, but for someone like me who hasn't really done much of this, honest to goodness four wheeling, I was um, a little nervous. But after watching Jacob go up in his CJ, I thought, well, Nugget can do that. And, well, she did. You guys are going to have a hard time seeing how actual steep and lumpy that is. It definitely is. There you go. They flex. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, did you ride up here? Good, good job. Yeah, you should be a spotter.
apparently this is just Hurricane Creek. This is why they call it Hurricane Creek Trail. was at this point we found a nice little pull out about one third of the way through the entire trail where we stopped and had us a little lunch and talked about how great our rigs were doing. Uh, we did make a decision here that turned out to be very helpful later on. We let a group of Land Rovers come through and have the spot to eat their lunch and we left on ahead of them. Little did we know how important that would be. We got this thing about 25 years ago uh, when Zeb was pregnant with her 25-year-old son. Ah. And uh, we were looking for a scout and we ended up with this one instead. <laughs> but, uh, but it's been uh, the most reliable thing we've had for the last 25 years. And you guys have put a lot of miles on it. Yeah, I think it's got about two, 270 now almost. Well, maybe 270 something, but it's it's nice. It's factory uh, 345, 500 CFM, Holly two barrel, and it's a nice automatic. setup. It's power tilt steering, factory air, power disc brakes. I mean, we're the luxury cruiser on this. Uh, I was trip. about to say, you just you know, just throw in shade. <laughs> but you know, it's the best it's looked in 25 years. It it's is sharp. To revert back to its true form, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Slowly, <laughs> one slowly, rust slowly. spot at a time. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, this is just uh, Rhino Liner, Rhino. Raptor, Raptor Liner. That's what it's Raptor go. Liner, is. it came with the gun <laughs> in a GM white and just redid the top and this original fire orange, flame orange, it's whatever they call it. But yeah, she just, she just keeps on rolling. Right now, it has a leak in the uh, Yeah, it's like triple. Uh, it's What's that? Yeah, but your your rally wheel there. I had the same same thing on this the first time you guys saw this. The first two times. Thank you, Mike Moore. Yeah, it's still on. It's Jacob. Tell us about your Jeep. So I've got a it's a '67 Jeep CJ5. It's got the uh, the four cylinder T90C Dane 18 transfer case. Um, I actually got it from a buddy. He he bought it to make a rock crawler, never did nothing with it. And he's like, come get it out of my yard. So I went and got it. And uh, The perfect price. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my biggest upgrades I've done to it, it's got four-wheel disc brakes from Brendan's Garage. Um, it's got a limited slip in the front and a, a, a ratcheting locker in the back. That's a pretty solid little machine. Yeah, it's, it's cruising right along. And Kept up with me on the interstate. <laughs> yeah. That's as fast as a truck driver. We found that out. <laughs> yeah, which is plenty fast. <laughs> and, of course, I put the half top on it, which has made a world of difference right now with it snowing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's sharp. That is sharp. So, Jacob's with um, 7 Bar Salvage. Yep. So, check him out on YouTube. You can pause the video right now. <laughs> pause it. Go over there and subscribe. And then come back because you got to finish this video for me. All right, but he's got other video from the trip. So if you enjoy this one, go over there and check out the rest of the footage. So anyway, very cool. It's, uh, well, maybe it'll quit in a minute. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, as you can tell, we were all pretty surprised at how well our rigs were doing. <laughs> Uh, none of us really had a lot of experience on hard trails or anything, so this one was right up our alley at this point. That's why we had picked the level four trail. That didn't quite turn out to be that. You're okay. You'll come up and over. You're okay. Yeah. 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 It was close. <laughs> you had no problem. No diff. No problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a mud hole there. That's where we left level four and entered level five. There was no way a 50 year old scout without a lift and lockers and a winch was going to just cruise up this hole. It's hard to tell right here, but that mud puddle is in a hole about two feet lower than that rock he's getting ready to come up or maybe three feet. And you'll notice here when he does, his front tire kind of slips off of that rock and pins his spring right on top of it. So, time to break out the winch. But that doesn't go so well either. And we didn't do a real good job of showing what is to the left of that scout. It's about a 40 foot drop into the creek. And there's Jeep parts down there. <laughs> and we didn't want to put scout parts down there. So it was uh, is off camera. It just, it, we were a little freaked out, I have to say. This tire is light on the ground right here. You get, you're going to get no traction here. Yeah. Oh, it's real bad out here. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you should have put that tire in right there. I don't think the bank will give way. Well, yeah, no. And he and I both have diffs you don't on have this enough, side. Yeah, you don't have enough clearance. We can't come get... over that. Yeah. You're going to go thunk right into it. He's going to get right here, and he's going to put a toe strap on me. Yep. <laughs> and I'll put a toe strap on somebody else. 
How bad did it look from out here? Uh, you're tired of trying to live. Yeah. And when you rock back and hit the foot, you know, and you stop, you only only about five pounds. And I think when pounds. I come up, I need to be further that way that until the last minute. Okay. <laughs> And right there, there is the spot where things went sideways. Literally went sideways. His tire turned, he slid down on the rock, jammed his spring right into it, and the winch gave up the ghost. So now we were trapped. Couldn't get around him, couldn't get up. A handful of people were pulling up behind us in Land Rovers, and lucky for us, they had lots of traction boards. I think you have to let yourself back a little bit. I wanted to be a little bit more than one to come up here. Yeah. Your spring pack is on that rock now. That or we could go around, look, we could go around that tree yeah. and it might yeah. lift you up over better. That's mm -hmm. kind of dragging you into the rock. Yeah, I'm into the That'll pick up a little bit. If I can go back. If yeah, you can you get it back and it not, here. but this wheel was lifting off the ground here. It's going to pull your tire off. Yeah. Wait till you guys go. Hold on. Yeah. Ride this Stressing me out. Stressing me out. I'm thinking I'll walk out. Okay, watch out for the cable. Don't get too close to that cable. Well, Walt, we tried winching, and his winch burned up, and his tire is. I've never seen that leaf spring bound up like that. Before. Bound off speed. I think that leaf spring might be shot too. I don't know how I'm getting on. It's bent really good, man. Yeah. Did you see it on the back, on the back spring on? No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I do see it. I can see it from here. Right in there. What is it? Uh, my uh, thing on the back thing. I was the I was trying to So we tried traction boards and jacking it up with a farm jack to get things under the wheel and putting people on the fender to add weight. But the busted winch just wasn't going to let us go backwards at all. And the big rock wasn't going to let us go forward. So the best we could figure out, the best choice we had was to take an ax to the tree saver and let the winch loose so he could back back down and by this time change his tire because the tire had totally let air out the good thing is that when the tire let the air out it allowed the scout to slide forward six inches which released the bulk of the pressure on the winch line so when we did cut it 
there was practically no reaction. It basically just fell. We had Mark hold a tow strap that went around the tree a couple times and hooked through the hook on the winch. Not really to hold it back, but to just let it slow down as it unwound around the tree. But it turned out we really didn't even need that. Well, then it was my turn. Lead the way up. There was nobody ahead of me to help, and I don't have a winch. And I can't tell you how stressful this situation was. <laughs> um, Nugget was bouncing to the left and down the hill, or sure felt like it. Uh, like I said, we're not, we're not level five, level six kind of four-wheelers. Um, but we were doing our best. You got to remember when you watch this, I don't have an automatic. I have a three speed with highway gears. Makes you long for an automatic. What I was trying to do is to come up near the guy with the puffy black jacket. Because if I came straight, my diff would hang up on that rock. And it may not totally look like it, but trust me, it's the truth. Plus where my buddy Mark is standing in the gray jacket, there's only about six inches of ground there. And it appeared to be fresh, like it was shoveled in. <laughs> and so we really didn't want to put a vehicle on it. Here's where I have to give a big shout out to the Carolina Trail Rovers. The Land Rover group had called up behind us and volunteered lots of traction boards, which helped, and a little more expertise than we had for sure. Well, I'll be the first to say that was not the way to do that. Um, slick pedals and a three speed that I was trying to balance the clutch on. And when it started going, I kind of just went for it. And well, it turned out okay. <laughs> but no, that is not the way to do that.
Hard driver and come straight. Keep doing what you're doing. Come on. Remember that thin piece of land I was talking about? Well, it gave way under Mike's wheel. So, yeah, we needed to put a strap on it. And then someone had the brilliant idea to put a few rocks in that hole to fill it up. So we did that and well, it helped considerably. <laughs> With his new tire and a rock-filled hole covered with traction boards, Walt made his second attempt. Okay. And I'm happy to report that this one turned out much more successful. Another huge shout out to the Carolina Trail Rovers for pitching in and helping out. We were uh, a pretty happy group when we made it out of there. Well, the sun has finally come out. I think it was 25 degrees this morning when we woke up. The, well, you saw the ice inside the camper windows, but everybody's getting packed up. 
we have found, so I got a little body damage on Nugget, um, right behind the front tire, I'll show you that. Um, but outside of that, she still seems fine. Uh, the driver's door might not be shutting. They said that they couldn't get it to shut, but I think it's just because they don't slam it as hard as I do. <laughs> it's never been great. Anyway, we'll get packed up and we'll get on the road and head on back. Uh, yesterday was quite an adventure. Right there. Just a little, a little bend up. I should be able to bend that back down. Ooh, and maybe a little pinch on the tailpipe. Oh yeah, right there. Woohoo. Uh, I don't think it'll hurt anything. Nah, that's okay. But right here, right there. Oh well. I'll wear that badge with honor. Well, this is where we'll end it. We're gonna head our way back. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be much of a problem. Hopefully we're three and a half hours away. But anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure and subscribe, like, and comment on the videos if you got any questions or, or you just like seeing the bottom of Nugget's undercarriage. <laughs> anyway, if you liked it, I, I don't know if I did. Um, take care. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road.